<laughs> well, gentlemen of the AEF, here's a young lady who's traveled many thousands of miles to entertain you. She really deserves a niche in that good old G.I. Hall of Fame. Men, a Christmas command performance for Francis Langford. <laughs> Okay, and Christmas greetings, fellas. It's customary to answer the request you write in, and this is no time to break an old custom. So regards to everybody at Navy 232, B.L. Swanson and all at 726. Scoop, Uncle, and Leroy, Navy 152. Also, so do the cats. Ralph and the homesick Seabees with the 72nd, the gang and hut 261, Van the Flying Dutchman, Ray the Yankee Clipper, Mig the Whap, Rube the Swede, Ken the shoplifter, and Jelly Belly O'Connor. <laughs> the whole gang at 464. And all of you who have taken the trouble to drop me a line during the year. Here's the song you've asked me to do over and over again. It had to be you. <laughs> Franny, that was swell. Well, fellas, every week, command performance is snowed under with a flock of requests for the familiar sounds of home. All kinds of sounds. The neighbor's piano, flivver horn, the five o'clock whistle, a girl saying no. <laughs> All the sounds of home. Why, only yesterday, a sergeant in Honolulu asked us if he could hear someone giving his mother-in-law a hot foot. Well, naturally, we can't do that because there's no smoking in this theater. But what we are going to do is take a G.I. in New Guinea and let him listen to the sounds of his typical day back home when he was a good old civilian in Middletown, USA. Uh, then uh, he got up at 7 a.m. in those days, the loafer. And this was the first sound you would have heard in his bedroom. Ah, 
Ah, but of course, Joe finally did get up. And after he'd uh, sleepily dressed himself, he groped his way to the bathroom where he gave himself a thorough washing. Uh, at 8.30, he arrives at the corner filling station where he works as an attendant. And a few minutes later, comes in his first customer. Yes, sir. Fill her up. Well, you don't hear that anymore, fellas. <laughs> Later that morning at work, Joe gets word that his aunt has been taken suddenly ill. And early that afternoon, we find him at the hospital visiting her. Go on here. Get your scope on here. You can't tell one player without another scope uh, on here. <laughs> Chewing gum, peanuts, cracker jack, chewing gum. Ah, yes, chewing gum. You don't hear that anymore either, fellas. <laughs> well, it's a great game, and Joe enjoys every inning of it. His dodgers are behind by a run as they come to bat for the last half of the ninth. But the bases are full with two out, and that slugger is up. It's three and two on the batter. Here's the lineup. The pitch. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah, there goes the ball game. He's struck out. <laughs> And so Joe disconsolately wins his way home. A bit thirsty, he pours himself a glass of milk. Hey. <laughs> Just a minute, I said milk. Whose day is this, yours or mine? <laughs> oh, beg pardon. Well, it's after dinner now, and Joe has a date. Yes, just a boy and girl in the good old days. And all Joe wants are the simple little pleasures he loves so dearly. Cut it out, wise guy. <laughs> I see. And that's the saga of Joe, the sound story of a G.I. before he became government issue. Knight finds him once more, just as we met him this morning. <laughs> ah, well. Sleep well, Joe. Pleasant dreams. Yes, you're going to need pleasant dreams, Joe. Because when the mailman comes tomorrow morning, boy, are you going to get some greetings. 